Hey everybody, it's Tortoise Investing coming at you today with more dividend stocks that you can buy and hold forever. You really cannot underestimate the power of dividend compounding over time. And I've got five pretty good ones coming at you today. Before we jump into that, it's YouTube. You know what to do. Go ahead and hit those button thingies. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. We got Northern Grunham Corporation. We got William Sonoma. Morgan Stanley, Starbucks, and Enbridge are going to be what we're going to be taking a deep dive into today. So Northern, this is a defense stock. These usually do good in times of ups and downs and all arounds. These are your old reliables. Uh, this one has an adjusted free cash flow of 1.55%, dividend yield of 1.67%, and a payout ratio of 21.9%. Now they do have some debt at 11.8 billion. Their EBITDA is 7.68 billion, and if you've seen my stuff before, I don't like my debt to be three times more than my EBITDA. I mean, I don't like my. I think I said that right. Anyways, revenue is been increasing for them at a rate of 7.24% over the last five years. They do have some decreasing free cash flow here, but that can be attributed to these share outstandings decreasing. They are doing share buybacks, which will make the uh, EPS and the return on capital look a little bit better. As you can see here, at return on capital employed has been going up and up and up since 2019 was at 9.72%, now sitting at 19.72%, so very nice. And EPS over the last 10 years has been increasing at a rate of 14.79%. A growing EPS is a growing company, so another strong thing that you like to see. And one thing that I really like is they have been winning contracts like crazy. Uh, right here, if you just take a quick look, uh, they won a non-standard ammunition deal with the United States Army. They got the Hawkeye aircraft contract. They won the SEP WIP Block 3 contract. A lot of defense contracts are being awarded to them, and that's just going to increase that cash flow even more. So I can see this company definitely growing quite a bit over the next couple of years, and they are off their recent high of $540. So down almost 100 bucks off their recent high. Maybe a good buying opportunity. Who knows? All right, next up we got William Sonoma. There is something really special with this company that I like a lot, and I will show you in just a second. Has an adjusted free cash flow, super high, 9.5, uh, 9.45 percent. Got a dividend yield, 2.87 percent, and a payout ratio of 21 percent. Plenty of room for that to keep growing. You love to see a low payout ratio. Revenue has been increasing at the rate of 10.39% over the last five years. It looks like their rate of growth is increasing. Another thing that you like to see, free cash flow has been increasing at a rate of 15.98% over the last 10 years. Up and to the right, like to see it. EPS has been rapidly growing over the last 10 years at a rate of 20.4%. That can be attributed to... After 2020, they have just really taken off with their EPS. Um... Uh, William Sonoma has been doing really good. Uh, they're down off their highs, but like as a company, their financial sheet is pretty much flawless. Uh, if you look here, the thing I love about them is they have no debt. Zip, zilch, nada. The only thing that they are paying on are their leases for their buildings, and that is absolutely ridiculous. Their dividend has been increasing at a rate of 11.25% over the last 10 years. So another strong compounder. And uh, the share outstanding has been decreasing at a rate of 3.73%. So they are doing pretty rapid share buybacks. The re uh, blah, 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 blah. return on capital employed is Again, ridiculous. At 2020, it was at 19%, and it is hovering around 50% now. That is one of the highest return on capital employees that I have seen out of a company. And yeah, uh, if you don't know what Williams Sonoma is, it, they sell a bunch of like house goods. You got your kitchen aids, you got your crock pots, stuff like that. Uh, well, Instapots. So a lot of high end kitchen and just bake goods you can check out their website if that's something that you're interested in but 
yeah, they're a thriving business and they have been doing very well and things have been turning quite, uh, just, just trucking right along. And next up, got Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley, uh, this is my second favorite bank. I like Bank of America the bestest overall, but this one I feel is on sale, and they did just announce a buyback program. And when it comes to any any holding, announcement of a buyback is a great announcement. So let's take a look at the revenue here. Revenue has been increasing at a rate of 7.49% over the last 10 years. Uh, they're recently over $100 a share, so they're down to $85.92, so right at 15% down off the recent highs. Uh, that EBITDA has also been increasing 14% over the last 10 years. EPS has been growing at a rate of 14% over the last 5 years. So, again, pretty good growing overall, and they've got a great financial sheet. Uh, they have quite a bit of debt at 241 billion but a lot of your bank stocks will have a lot of debt but they've got plenty of cash on hand they got 128 uh, billion dollars in cash on hand so pretty nice uh the dividend has been increasing at a ridiculous rate over the last 10 years at 31.53 percent bonkers if you ask me and with the shares outstanding again they just announced a 20 billion multi-year stock buyback program as well as a 9.7 percent dividend hike so this is going to be decreasing and whenever they're doing share buybacks that just means that you own more of the company for each of your shares that you hold so that is one thing i love to see companies do Next up, we got Starbucks. We all know what Starbucks is. There's real expensive coffees that we can't help but buy. They got just a free cash flow yield of 2.19%. Got a dividend yield 2.16%. Payout ratio a little bit on the high side of 67%, but not too bad. They have revenue growth of 9.26% over the last 10 years. And the EPS has been growing at a rate of 11.97% over the last 10 years. They do have some debt, $11.87 billion, but their EBITDA, $6.29 billion. Again, their debt is not more than three times their EBITDA, so I am okay with that. The dividend's been increasing at a rate of 17.57% over the last 10 years, so another great compounder overall. I really like Starbucks, especially under $100. I think it's a nice little entry point. And they have been doing some share buybacks here and there, and that is something I'm hoping that they get back to doing because they were doing it pretty heavily there for about a year, couple of years, and now it's just kind of slowed down a little bit. But maybe they'll get back to it. Uh, the return on capital employed has been increasing now above 20% and climbing. So, yeah, another strong company. And one thing that I like when it comes to retail businesses, anything like that, one reason why I like Dollar General so much is store openings. So since the beginning of the year, let's go ahead. I'm just going to scroll up. This is all the stores that uh, Starbucks has been has opened this year, and there's the locations. But, uh, yeah, a thriving business is one that is constantly expanding, and this is constantly expanding they have so many, so many stores that have been opened. And that's just going to add more revenue to them. It's going to add more free cash flow. It's going to make it to where they can do more share buybacks and just be a stronger company overall. And it's Starbucks. They got, it's like a name, super duper name brand. Everyone knows what Starbucks is. And lastly, rounding things off, we got Enbridge. This is a higher yielding company. Uh, they get a free cash flow yield of 9.72%. They got a dividend yield of 7.10%. Payout ratio, you might be thinking, oh my god, that's almost 400%. What are you talking about? Uh, this is a free cash flow yield situation. Uh, this is something where you don't just look at the EPS. EPS is usually what uh, determines the payout ratio. Uh, Enbridge is fine. Enbridge is fine. Um, their revenue has been increasing their rate seven point seven four percent over the last ten years. Their free cash flow has been increasing their rate of twenty four percent over the last two years. They they were not doing so well as you see here, but since twenty eighteen, they have been going up and to the right, which is what you want to see increasing free cash flow. Uh, they've been doing a lot of expansions been buying a lot of new projects especially renewable energy which is the reason i like them so much uh the eps kind of been a little bit all over the place uh again net income as well 
they do carry a lot of debt, but a lot of your, uh, a lot of the oil companies, utilities, stuff of that sort, uh, your gas companies are going to have quite a bit of debt on hand, but it is something that I think that they are able to manage and manage well. Uh, their return on capital employed, pretty low around the fives and sixes, but again, that's to be expected with an energy company as Enbridge is one. Now, the thing that I mentioned that I like about them so, so much is the renewable energy sector. If you see here, they got 23 wind farms, they got 16 solar energy operations, five waste heat recovery facilities, geothermal and power transmission projects. So a lot of renewable energy, which I think is absolutely going to be the future. And it makes me feel good seeing that a lot of companies are slowly but surely moving over to uh, renewable energy and natural gas. And I, th I, I think I read in here somewhere by like 2050, um, which, you know, that's still quite a bit of the ways off, but they're hoping to be absolutely uh, like emission free which is awesome and hopefully a lot of more companies follow suit because it has been hot here lately you know global warming's not really yet is but yeah that's everything i got for you and again uh if you have any questions or anything let me know down below and until next time see yous.